So if no one person contributed to over half the support of your relative. So now you've got this kid, there's usually a support test where one person has to give more than half the support for the kid to qualify. But now you've got multiple people that are supporting this kid. And that means that none of them are, are meeting the support test because instead of having just like one person supporting them or one tax entity, you've got multiple tax entities, none of which provide more than half the support. Well, you can't just lose the benefits from the credit from the kid. What good is the kid if no one gets any tax benefit from them? Someone's got to get it in that situation. So what do you do? So, so if no one person contributed over half of the support of your relative or a person who lived with you all year as a member of your household, but you and another person's provided more than half of your relative's support, special rules may apply that would treat you as having provided over half of the support. Okay, someone's got to be able to claim this person, right? For details on that, you can see publication 501. Permanently and totally disabled. A person who is permanently and totally disabled, if at any time during 2023, that person can't engage in any substantial gainful activity, meaning they can't work generally, because of physical or mental condition, and a doctor has determined that this condition has lasted or can be expected to last continuously for at least a year, uh, or can be expected to lead to death. That's what permanently and totally disabled. What is, so we saw that that condition was, for example, in one of the age tests for a qualifying child. So again, you have to get into the details. What exactly does that mean, right? Because so public assistance payments. If you receive payments under the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, the TANF program or other public assistance program, uh, you used the money to support another person. In that case, you could see publication 501. All right, qualifying child of more than one person. So now you've got this child where usually you go through that questionnaire, only one person would qualify, but now you've got a child that could potentially qualify for more than one person. You can't put the same child on multiple returns. Only one person gets the tax benefit of that kid. So we got to say, uh, who's going to, who's going to get it. So even if a child meets the conditions to be the qualifying child of more than one person, only one person can claim the child as a qualifying child for all the following tax benefits, unless the special rule for children of divorced or separated parents described earlier applies. So you've got the child tax credit and credit for other dependents, line 19, and the additional child tax credit. You can't have two people claiming those credits for one social security number for one kid, right? That kid, you know, the, the kid only has so many virtues, right? Which are tax benefit virtues. So you can't like, so head of household, you can't have two people go and say from single to head of household, changing their and upgrading their filing status based on a dependent, which is the same dependent. Credit for child and dependent care expenses. So we haven't talked about that credit yet, but if you have child and dependent care, you can't have those on two tax returns. And so exclus exclusion for dependent care benefits, that's form 2441 part three and the earned income credit, which we'll talk about later, largely dependent upon the number of dependents. You can't be claiming multiple dependents to get this refundable credit, which is quite substantial. 